Hello Ray class, this is that Yi guy here with an updated Blade Vortex Berserker build. First of all, it's been a long time since my last video, but I hope everyone's doing well. I won't bore you with my life story, just know that I've been absent from gaming in order to develop my own indie game. I added some buttons on the side to allow for you to navigate through the video more easily. If you already know something, please feel free to skip ahead. Now why should you play this build? Well, because as of 2.6, this build is one of the least gear-intensive builds in the game, requiring zero specific uniques to clear in-game content. Another thing to note is that the upcoming changes to Blade Vortex doesn't make it weaker, and Berserker class remains the same. In fact, while Energy Shield builds have received significant nerfs, this one remains completely unaffected. So we can use the current performance pre-patch as a good indicator of things to come. For people who haven't seen my older videos, here's some new clips I took to demonstrate the power of this build as of 2.6. What I'm using for the purpose of a demonstration is far from optimal to simulate the kind of performance you can see on a budget. Now here I was doing some T16s with damage modifiers rolled on them. They were pretty easy to clear with Chimera Boss remaining one of the easiest where you can simply tank through him while some other builds might have problem with him. The only difficult part is the smoke phase, but since my build uses stacker, you can simply whirling blade through all the clouds rather quickly in order to pop in. As long as your blade vortex clips where the boss is hiding, he will come out of hiding and you will immediately start leeching. Now I ran into more trouble at the shaper, partly due to the fact that I'm super rusty at the game. At the end of the day, this build isn't really optimized to kill Shaper, but it's definitely doable once you raise the DPS high enough to acquire in-game gear. Now, I farmed quite a few Shapers before my hiatus. The fights were stressful, but definitely doable. Now, using Path of Building, we can see the skill tree as of 3.0. So now we can go in and look. One thing we're gonna do, because this is a starter build, is that instead of the HP nodes you see here, we're actually going to start with melee damage and take all of the melee physical nodes here, right? Taking it here, and then you can either go down, pick up HP nodes, or just continue to follow the path. The reason why you want to take these nodes initially is that these will really boost your physical damage, allowing you to level with Molten Strike or Sunder very early on until you have the decent amount of gear with enough spell damage before you switch over to blade vortex this will much much improve your leveling experience because trust me if you just have a block of hp and you're trying to whack at things limply you're not gonna have fun so go ahead and take those nodes and eventually respect out of them and eventually and you want to end up with as much hp as possible and follow along here grab these hp nodes uh, you don't have to prioritize skill duration as you're leveling up until you make the switch into blade vortex because it's pretty useless for sunder and motion strike now move along here and it is optional for you to go to the left side first because one skill you really want to prioritize is the Vault Pack. In combination with Warlord's Mark and the Leech in Pain Reaver, Vault Pack will be super useful and it will really allow you to stay alive and do a lot of damage. But the things that are not top, top priority is the cluster here to the left, uh, critical damage nodes here because uh, you want to save all anything that's related to crit till relatively later in the gearing. This nodes right here, however, it's really good. It's a lot of physical damage that you can scale, and it applies to spell as well because it's just straight up physical damage. And Blade Vortex is a physical damage spell. You can go down all the way down here and take a right and you can scale physical damage and critical strike and here's another really efficient life cluster here so eventually this is how you want the skill tree to look and it also takes 
all the efficient jewel sockets you can. Now, early on, if you find really, really good jewel, you might want to deviate and really prioritize those. But the jewel sockets are really something that you only take if you have the jewels to put in them. But ultimately, yeah, this is what your shield tree is going to look like. As you can see, we pick up a lot of life. We have 223% life, which is pretty good. And we don't focus too much on area because of the change to the radius and the way it scales. Uh, something to consider later on is if you end up getting a efficient way to get generate power charges, you might want to get maximum power charge. Uh, pretty much what I'm saying is if you're lucky enough to get Skyforth as a drop or just chance it, you pretty much want to pick up the maximum power charge as it will suddenly become very efficient for you to do so. So that's pretty much the overall general skill tree. But let's go over to ascendancies. Now, I personally would prefer Pain Reaver first as Leech is pretty much the whole shtick. Right? like it helps you clear faster and it helps you stay alive and it will also lead to cloaking savagery the reason why i would take cloaking savagery first as opposed to trying to prioritize aspect carnage is that damage is great but cloaking savagery will allow you to tank uber Azaru with much much worse gear as well as allowing you to clear a lot of contents early on you are sacrificing some clear speed, but if you don't die at all, it, things will go so much more smoothly. Yeah, that pretty much sums up the skill tree. And I will definitely post the links down below as well as a snapshot of this so that you can reference it later. Just remember, the important part is prioritize the melee nodes first in order to have a better experience leveling and then just respect out of it later and if this is your second build as in you have all the power leveling gear that you need then you can go ahead and just skip those and get yourself some light sprigs and just spell cash away to max as for bandits i will go alira at least that's what i would expect to go first because it is really efficient the amount of resist you get for one skill point it's really good 15 resist all and the crit modifier is also worth one skill point mana regen is just gravy but it's also perfectly viable to go two passive points as that's always useful with a skill tree out of the way the, all that's left to talk about is the gear and the gems but honestly ever since 2.4 not much has really changed in those aspects so i'm gonna go ahead and just include the clip I used it last time and I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it in this one so I don't have to link you guys everywhere yep now Divin areas is a great item because the AOE is amazing for quality of life improvement same reason why I took uh, AOE radius so early in the tree and if you can get the enchant on your helmet that's great for your end game as well but it's absolutely not required as you can see I use two normal daggers for the most part of my game. Now for the damage links, uh, you can probably see that I'm not using faster spell casting, uh, unlike the old builds, because that's because of the change of Blade Vortex. Now there's only 20 stacks, and with just the Echo Cast, I managed to get to 20 stack very easily. I use Immortal Call set up more out of habit than anything. This build doesn't really need it, uh, but I, I recommend just having it. Just you know, for the safety. Occasionally it will save your life and it will smooth out the leveling experience. Now, Whirling Blade Fortify adds to the guild build's mitigation. Um, of course, because Fortify is simply amazing and it's part of the main selling point of using a dagger other than, you know, Whirling Blade. The Blasphemy Curse, I choose to use run curses on Blasphemy and forego some damage auras because I don't need the damage aura. And also the Blasphemy makes cursing much easier and because I farm so fast uh, having it just constantly on is really really does help and I run as you can see I run both in feeble and um, I also run this um, temporal chains so for temporal chains 
it's much better for lower tier maps because uh, you don't want to mitigate their damage so much so that your cloak or savagery doesn't proc but and um, for the higher tier maps because there is a chance of something just literally one shotting you through fortify and 7.4k hp uh, and feeble is great because uh, as long as you even leave you with one hp you can heal up to full in a single second so the rest of my gear, nothing really special. Just good stats. So look for uh, resist. Try to cap out your resist. You don't have to over cap as much as I did here, but yeah, it's good to have that uh, at max. Now for some fighting tips. So for blood magic maps, all you have to do really is to just not run your auras and the problem solved. With decent gear, you can even run tier 15s, as I have. Um, you just don't need the auras for it. For reflect physical damage, simply swap in physical to lightning gem. And that should be enough for your leash to offset the reflect. As long as you have decent amount of armor. So if you don't have decent amount of armor and the mitigation isn't enough, uh, you should put in add chaos damage gem. The same goes for reflect elemental damage maps. You swap out the increased fire damage gem for increased duration as well as turning off the herald of fire. Once again, add in the add chaos damage gem if that simple swap isn't enough and you can comfortably run all the reflect maps. Now last thing to remember is that this build does rely heavily on cloaked and savagery and that's something you should keep in mind. And because of this, there's one weakness of this build, and that is small, fast hits, or in rare cases, lightning thorns. Armor and shield help mitigate the minor ones, while your basic 3% leech makes us not a problem most of the time. But in fights like Chevron or Torture Chambers boss who shoots lasers, um, or any map bosses who use Firestorm or Ice Storm, you have to be careful, mainly because your cloak won't proc and you're stuck with 3% leech. So Fortify and Azeri's Promise Flask will be your friend in those situations. Well, this concludes the guide to the Blade Vortex Berserker. Whether or not you end up playing the build, I wish you all good luck with your drops in the upcoming league. And enjoy Fall of Oriath. And I will be streaming on Twitch for the first couple days. So if you have time might as well join me right hopefully i'll be entertaining but either way um you can just come chat whatever and if you have any questions about this build feel free to ask them in the comments below or just ask them on twitch right thank you so much for watching i really appreciate your time and uh, yeah once again good luck with the new league